What up, Big Dirty? So for quite some time now, I have wanted to do ribs Malcolm Reed's way. Well, today is that day. So you can see, I'm not just going to use uh, some of his seasoning and then just use whatever sauce and whatever method. I'm actually going to... Duck break. I'm actually going to use his exact competition method, which he shared in a video like a couple months ago. He also did one a couple of years back, like four or five years ago he did one. But uh, we're going to be using the vinegar sauce, the barbecue sauce, hot barbecue rub, and the barbecue rub, all from Killer Hogs. He uses all four of these of his own products in his competition ribs. Um, I've got uh, cherry and some hickory, which is, I believe, and apple. I don't remember, I'll have to go back and check, but whichever wood he uses, I'm gonna copy. I've got some brown sugar, French's mustard, that's what he uses. I like Plockman's mustard when I'm eating a brat or something like that, but in his video, he had French's, even though it doesn't add any flavor, I'm gonna carbon copy him, as well as the magical blue bottle of parquet. So I've got my chimney started. I'm gonna get the uh, uh, coals into the barrel. And I'm using a pit barrel. He used a drum smoker, but a pit barrel basically is that. I mean, so I've got two beautiful St. Louis cut ribs. Uh, I've already got them trimmed. If you want to know how to trim them, just there's a million videos on that. So let's get this started with the prep work while the cooker's heating up. All right, so step one he puts a light coating of French's yellow mustard. On the ribs, acts as a binder. I've already removed the membranes as well off of these ribs because, as we all know, the membrane is a barrier and you want to get as much flavor into these ribs as possible. So we just give a light coating, and then we're going to go in with the Killer Hogs hot barbecue rub first. And he said to just give it a light dusting of that and then pat it on there. Don't rub it in. Pat it. You can use olive oil. If you don't want to use mustard, you can use... Sometimes I'll hit it with a shot of cooking spray just to get something that the rub can bind to because you want it to bind it acts like glue. All right, same thing on this side. And he said to put a very light coating again. A hot rub. Add it on in there. Look good, look good. Oh yeah, buddy. Look at that. These ribs are already starting to look good enough to eat. There. And then, he said to go back in this time with the barbecue rub, his actual rub, and layer that. And I've had some of my friends that come over for cookouts and they say, they'll see me using someone else's rubs. And they're like, Reggie, I thought you made your own rub. Well, I do. But I still like trying everybody else's stuff, you know? Barbecue brotherhood, man. You gotta support your brothers. Those ends real good. Yeah. He said to leave them for a while to set up on the counter. I'm not going to do that because it's about 90 degrees out here. I'm going to put them in the fridge, let them set for a little bit, and then we'll come out and slap them on the smoker. He just sat about a, about a, almost an hour, and just look at that. Can you guys see that in the sun? I hope so. They almost have a mahogany on them already, and we ain't even smoked them yet. I'm going to go ahead and fire them in here. Okay. Now those look pretty good just sitting like that. So let's get the cooking rods back in. And on a pit barrel, these rods are actually part of the metering airflow system, so you want to put them back in place. 
I didn't hang the ribs. I'm cooking them on the rack because that's the way Malcolm Reed did it. So now we're gonna close them up. All right, and we're gonna check back on those in about 30 minutes just to see how they're doing, just to make sure everything's going good, that they're cooking at the rate I want. And then we'll move on to the next step. I also wanna point out real quick to pit barrel cooker owners or to any drum system, uh, there's no exact vent setting. Some days that vent is actually set halfway, depending if I want a hotter cook or hotter temps. And some days it's just, it just runs, you know, it needs more air, depending on a lot of factors in the atmosphere, barometrics, all that stuff. She's holding around 253, which is good. That's right in the zone that Malcolm wants. I had to damp it down. I had to close it about a quarter. And for my elevation, pit barrel cooker says that should be about half open for 2,000 feet. What's up, birdie? I gotta get that tree out of here. It did. Almost did. The other one's great. But yeah, pit barrel says 2,000 feet. That vent should be halfway open. Well, some days yes, some days no. Just wanted to point that out to you guys. Uh, normally I don't use a, a temperature probe at the grate because these things actually, I, can, I just kind of know. But I want to replicate uh, Malcolm's uh, competition recipe as close as possible. So, and also, I'm using a chunk of cherry and a chunk of hickory, which is what he uses. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. Hits holding at 252, which is pretty darn good. I've got some apple juice, a little bit of water, same as Malcolm Reed did, and we're just gonna spray it on these ribs, get them, keep the moisture on them. Oh yeah, those are looking good. A little bit of pullback from the bone right there. But these are going to be about another hour. Give or take. There we go. Alright. So, we're going to let that climb back up to 250. It should recover pretty quickly. And leave them for another 30 minutes. Do the same thing. off any of those drips all right now I can pull the glove off and this is also a trick I do I put some cotton gloves underneath and that gives you a lot more handling capabilities with hot hot food and whatnot all righty I don't need them no more grab the vinegar sauce let me give it another quick shake oh these things are smelling so good right now All right, wash, rinse, and repeat. And you should always roll the foil too. See how I roll that edge under instead of versus like just folding it one over the other? It creates a much better seal. All right, same thing. Boom, all righty. Those ends up. Okay, now we're gonna leave them for about an hour. We're gonna come back, check them. Might be an hour and 15. You could tell by the, the bend, even without unwrapping them. Uh, they should be nice and flexible, you know, but we'll check them in an hour. So I'm just gonna monitor my pit's temp and we'll be back. So I've got the uh, sauce mixed. That's a 75% the barbecue sauce by Killer Hogs to 25% vinegar sauce. And that's gonna be the finishing glaze. I've got it sitting on top of the pit barrel because he said it's good to warm up the sauce a bit. And you know, it's an easy way to do it. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and have a little peek here. Let me bring you guys in here so you can see this. Ooh, man, I wish you could smell what I can smell. And if they look about right, because these ribs were pretty much equal size, if this one looks good, then I know they're both fine. Oh yeah. All right, I'm gonna drain this juice off and we're gonna get these things back on and we're gonna glaze them with the 75 Killer Hogs de barbecue sauce, 25 Killer Hogs vinegar sauce mixture. It's nice and warm. I spoke too soon, I just remembered. Malcolm said to leave them 
for a good half hour. For a good half hour. Just don't touch them. Just let them rest. Let them, let them stop cooking. Let them cool down. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep the sauce warm. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more fuel because it's actually not as hot as I thought. And this is where you do want a little bit of heat to kind of glaze them up. So I'm just going to add a little bit more fuel to the, to the pit barrel. And by the time that charcoal is ready to rock, 30 minutes is plenty of time. Uh, these will be ready to glaze. So we're just going to leave them here and just let them rest. those juices and let's see what's going on here oh look at that that looks just like uh, Malcolm Reed's I don't know if there's enough light out here I hope so but I'm gonna go ahead and you see they feel like they're just about to break which is what he said you want so let me go ahead and make the foil bolts to put these in then we're going to glaze them and see what, what's what. Got the sauce warmed up. So now, we're going to do exactly what he said. Glaze these ribs with a light coating. Look at that. I can see the herbs and seasonings in that uh, in that sauce too. Mm. Man, oh man, it smells so good. So I have replicated every single thing that Malcolm Reed did, as far as I know. Sure, we get the ends of the bones too. Here and there. Okay, so now we're gonna get them back onto the cooker uh, in these little trays and let that set up for about 15 minutes. It's been about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And look, look at that glaze. That's beautiful. Look at that. So I'm going to slice up a rib probably out of this one right here and give it a taste after it cools off for about probably just about 10 minutes. Yeah, buddy. Oh, man. Those ribs look absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to select this guy right here. Let's see what we got. Oh man. Okay. I'm bringing you in for a close up. Look at that. Comes clean off the bone. Got just enough, I guess the word would be tension. <laughs> Let's go for another one. Cheers. Nobody has a glass like that. Shout outs to the FS5. My biggest fan club. Love all you guys. So there you have it. So how would I describe it? Very simple. Perfect amount of heat, sweet, savory, tangy vinegar. Just, just crazy. This is just crazy good barbecue. And I've got enough here probably to do, because I still have the mason jar with the 75-25 mix. Um, I could probably do another 8 or 10 racks of ribs with this. And I followed his steps exactly as far as how I seasoned them, how I sauced them, what temperatures I cooked at. I even cooked it in a barrel cooker like he did. I got the sauce all over me. Awesome. 
But <laughs> anyway, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, don't forget to check out my contest video. I'm going to do the drawing real soon. Link is in the description. Get your name in. All you got to do is drop a comment. You don't even have to be subscribed to me. I'd appreciate a subscription, but you don't have to be. Just check out the link in the description, and you could win two of my absolute favorite sauces. They're not barbecue sauces. But just, get, just go check out the video. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, I'm out. Spread them all.